This video will cover how to set up your camera and adjust your lens to get a good focused image on your CVX series vision system. It is assumed that you already have the camera mounted at the proper working distance and also the light mounted at the distance that you need it. Um, if you haven't done so already, you can consult the lens charts. Uh, there's lens charts in the manual that show the cameras and the different lenses that are available and where they are in focus. You can also use the machine vision lens advisor application that we have and uh, it's a, kind of an interactive program where you can select your camera put in your field of view working distance and then see which lenses are applicable so um, this video assumes that's already been done and uh, what we're going to do is we're also going to be adjusting the lens during this process so just a quick review of that um, here's an example of what one of the lenses look like uh, depends on the size may vary and the printing may vary depending on the lens that you have but in general they all have a aperture adjustment ring on the top which is kind of towards the camera, where the camera will be mounted, and the focus adjustment, fine focus adjustment, which will be normally towards the bottom. Um, usually you can tell with your aperture ring, it's uh, labeled, sometimes it's labeled with a C and O for closed and open. Um, sometimes it has some numbers like 1.4, 2.8, and that has to do with the f-stop. And the fine focus is sometimes labeled near and far, or sometimes maybe it has numbers like infinity, one meter, two, you know, depending on the distance. So the markings may vary, but the aperture ring and, a, and fine focus is what's going to, be, going to be adjusted in this section. So to the CDX program, I got a live connection with our remote desktop to a live controller. Um, you can start with a brand new program or one that you already started. Um, I'll go ahead and start a new program and you need to be in program mode to do this or setup mode um, to toggle back and forth you just simply click this button in the upper right now we're in run mode and you just click it to go back to setup mode so you want to be in setup mode when you add a new program here so to add a new program just click the upper left and simply click add new it will automatically de uh, default to area camera non, -me non 21 megapixel and then program settings so you can leave these alone unless you have some of these other options here but most standard cameras are this area camera and then just a generic program setting it will automatically go to the next program number that's available in this case it's one you can also change that if desired and you can also give it a label while you're here if you if you want what before you add the program simply click execute and that will add the program to the system here so what I'll do is to set the camera up is quite easy. You set the camera up right here. You click the set camera uh, button here. Um, if you have more than one camera, each camera will have its own tab and you just simply repeat these same settings that I'm going to show you on those camera tabs appropriately. So we're going to click on camera one, set camera. Now when you add a new program on the controller, it will automatically, it should automatically detect which camera is connected. So that should already be set. If for some reason is not or you need to change it, you can always select the camera from the list. If the wrong camera is selected, you'll see it gives, it gives you an error, tells you it's not connected, and it turns red. So if you have the wrong connected camera or the camera is not corrected properly, connected properly, it'll show up in red. But if you click auto, it should automatically detect and set the camera appropriately. So that should work. Um, the size here, this is the two megapixel camera, so it's fixed at 1600 by 1200. But depending on which camera type you have, uh, it sometimes allows you to change different resolution types um, that you can use. So it just depends on the camera. Uh, we're going to come back to this camera tab in a minute. I'm going to turn off the Lumitrax processing at, for the moment. So if you're not using the Lumitrax processing, you can uncheck that box. If you have the Lumitrax camera and the Lumitrax light, it will automatically enable that as a default unless you uncheck it. So in this, for, for starters here, I'm going to uncheck that. But the first thing you probably want to do or when you set up the camera is go to the lighting tab and make sure your lighting is enabled. So you can see right here it's already flash one is already enabled and light one is already associated to flash one but if you needed to change any of these settings you could. Um, as a default light one is linked to flash one so you shouldn't have to change it. Um, if you want to update the image while you're in this screen you can simply click this run button down here or you can click this continuous run and it will continuously update the image as you can see here. So while you're in this light setting, you can adjust the brightness of the light if you need to. Um, it's a setting, digital setting from 0 to 255, depending on your, uh, the needs for the part. So I'm going to leave it kind of right in the middle like it was at. But you can adjust the, digitally adjust the brightness for the light. Um, and that's it. So if you need to turn on the other lights, you can turn them on appropriately. Uh, the trigger tab here is where you set the triggering. As a default, the camera will trigger on what's called an ex or it's called external trigger. So 
basically a trigger sensor or the PLC or something will give it a trigger input. We also have an option for internal trigger where you can set a timer internally to trigger at a set rate. So for example, say you wanted to trigger every 500 milliseconds, you could turn on the internal trigger. And what it'll do is it'll cr create an internal timer and every 500 milliseconds it would trigger the camera automatically without any external trigger needed. So I'm going to leave this back to external for now. In this trigger tab, you can also assign which trigger number that you want. As a default, it will use trigger one unless you change it. So we're going to go ahead and leave that. And then back to the camera tab. So this is where you set up the, the guts of the image here. So what I'm going to do is the first thing you probably want to do is set after you've turned on the lights and everything is set your shutter speed. So the higher you make it, the darker the image is going to be. The lower you make it, or in other words, the longer the shutter speed is the more exposed it is. And the time will be displayed here in milliseconds. So for example, here's one over 60. It's 16 milliseconds. And then uh, we change it to one over 2,000. We're at half a millisecond. So the shutter speed is kind of a fixed time. It's how long the s s image sensor is exposed to light. Uh, depending on the application, if it's a moving target, you're going to need faster shutter speed. So you're required to, so the image doesn't blur. Even under stationary conditions, you still want to try to use a faster shutter speed because the faster shutter speed is, the, the faster your program is going to be. Um, so in this example, I'm going to use 1 over 2000. Um, there's also an additional setting here. If you want to, you can adjust what the sensitivity of the camera. The higher you raise this sensitivity, it basically amplifies the signal on the sensor. Um, the negative to it is it also amplifies noise. So you can brighten the image using the sensitivity setting, but you can also increase the noise level of the image. So normally you don't have to adjust this setting. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at 3.0. That's not normally what you need to adjust. So to adjust the camera lens itself, so you can see we're out of focus and we probably need to adjust our aperture. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and click this continuous run mode again so the image updates live. And I'll go over to my lens. So what I'll do is uh, the first thing you can adjust is the aperture. And that again, that's the ring that's more towards the camera. If I had, The more open I have it, you can see the brighter it gets, the more closed it is the darker it gets. So you kind of adjust it as needed. So I'll get this a little brighter here. And then once you have the aperture kind of where you need it, you can adjust the fine focus. So I'll go ahead and adjust the fine focus. You can see the image is getting focused there. I go too far, it goes back out of focus. So it's pretty easy to just get that optimum distance or optimum focal range there. Um, one other thing you can do if you want is uh, you can use the zoom tools here to zoom in the image or you can use the mouse the scroller on the mouse to zoom in but what we can do is zoom in on a feature that you want to look at and again you can do some adjustment on the focus there and get it really fine-tuned in um, you can also adjust the aperture too while you're at it if you need to so sometimes that helps to zoom in on a smaller feature kind of get a good look at the pixels and get a good focus when you want to return it back just zoom out or just simply click this fit and it will fit it back to the screen so that's really about it. It's a, a matter of set, first setting the correct shutter speed and then adjusting the aperture and the focus on the lens to get the desired image on the screen here. Um, if you're using the Lumitrax processing, you can, you, I'll go ahead and enable that. So you want to enable this. The setup's basically the same, except when you turn the Lumitrax on, the flashing of the light will be based off the shutter speed. So you can see it got a little bit darker here. So we have a couple options. We could. Uh, slow the shutter speed up a little bit or just simply again adjust our aperture on the lens if we need to brighten this and you can adjust accordingly so even if you're using Lumitrax processing the general setup is still the same you set up the normal image how you want it and then you can click over to shape image and start adjusting your Lumitrax settings but uh, but that's essentially the basics on getting a good image on the on the target so once you click you can click OK and then you can start adding your tools.